I was just checking my Google photos. And actually, the last time that myself and not did the event was exactly here. And that was in uh, 2020, January 26. Um, but I do have the exact same picture. Yes, yeah, so it was very nice, and it's, it's great to be back in this scene. So once again, my name is Yuki. Let me quickly introduce myself. And yeah, I have two hats. Number one, I'm a CFO, Chief Cash Officer at the Sustainable Lab. Now I joined starting from this year. And at the same time, I also have keep my other hats at FinTech Association of Japan, which is trying to connect the startups and corporates in one single platform. Yeah, so a bit of my background, I'm coming from a finance background, started working the longest time in Deutsche Bank Group in Japan for about seven, eight years. And then I quit the company, did my MBA in the UK, I came back, and that's where I first got to know Norbert. I was working at the firm of Japan. I joined the company when the company was about to open the office in Japan, first office in Tokyo. I joined as a FinTech director, spent about three and a half years. And then what Plug Play was, I mean, is doing is accelerate the program. So we invite startups and uh, not only Japanese startups, but also we just invite international startups and trying to foster open innovation. And then throughout the accelerate program in, back in uh, 2000, back in last year summer, that's where I got to know Sustainable Lab. Uh, the current company. I spent three months with them uh, trying to support the business, uh, trying to do more innovations, and I fell in love with the company, with the CEOs, and the teams, and I thought, yes, this is my sort of next challenge that I could take on. So that's why I joined the company starting from this year, January. What we're doing is, in, this is a nutshell, we, we call ourselves ESG as a service. We, the startups always try to come up with a new technology, so not SaaS, but we are calling ourselves ESG of service. Trying to create the ESG data pipeline. Now, I'll explain to you later what we mean by that, but at the moment, we are pretty confident to say that we are Japan's number one ESG data holder in Japan. Any data are not financial data, like that, that's all this in the PL, PL, BS. We get this data, and we are happy. We really regret to be the first uh, number one. ESG data holders in Japan. So this is a bit of fun stuff, uh, Google Trend. So this is a, uh, with a keyword um, ESG. I think it was ESG or uh, sustainability. So this is a global trend. It started back in 2017. Uh, yeah, it's been going up, so the popularity is going up. And I have another two slides. I happen to have presentation last Friday, last Thursday, to those delegates came from Switzerland. Uh, there are a bunch of Swiss, uh, Swiss university and BA students that came to Japan to like to know about the fintech ecosystem. So, like one slide is showing Switzerland, the other one is Japan. And yeah, in, in the end, the one at the bottom, Swiss, the one on the top were Japan. And I usually, given the fact that I'm based, I'm now doing this business, Japan is, in a way, from my view, about a year or two years behind what's happening. In the EU. So this clearly shows that, uh, for, for, let's say, for Switzerland, there has been sort of several reports uh, for Japan. There are more demands, more needs on this uh, ESG sustainability data itself. And what we think that ESG data is important is in, in this slide showing this. So we think that ESG data will be integrated in all transactions in the future. And currently, I think whenever people make decision making, any people try to make investment, they usually take into account the financial data. So what's the ROI, what's the return, what's the sort of uh, you know, ROI, what's the PDR, what's the PSI, etc. Those are the metrics that they look at. But we firmly believe that in the future, whenever people make any decisions, they not only take into account the, the financial data, but they will probably, probably have to look at the sustainability data or ESG data itself. That's not only this this making can be anything. It can be, of course, from a, a more business perspective. I think any supply chain uh, transactions, people look at the, the company's credit histories, but they'll probably look at the company's sustainable history, for example. Um, not only that, for example, yes, investor will look at it. Consumers, they're probably now people on Amazon or uh, EC malls, and they probably look at you know, uh, the, the products. 
and then they will resolve solve things by number of reviews, whether the, the price is high or low. I think there will be another metrics, another question metric saying whether this is sustainable, uh, whether sustainability score is high or low. And any, and then that's one consumer side, and probably from its perspective, when people do the job hunting, they probably look at its sustainability score. So I think that's why everything, all the transactions, all the decision making, if the ESG data will be embedded in, in certain degrees. And that's why we are betting as well. So there are huge problems at the moment on this ESG related data set. On one side, for the ESG professionals, which is investors, consulting firms, and any, any other people who like to analyze the ESG companies, sustainability, health company, ESG data, they have to, for those who've got Bloomberg, it's good, because at least Bloomberg can do some sort of, some, some degrees of work. But for those who don't, they, they need to look into the company's disclosing company disclosures, like the ESG report, CSR report, sustainability report, whatever. It but it takes a huge amount of time. For example, I'll show you later, but an example for Walmart, for example, they published 140 pages on uh, ESG report for one particular year, and the data itself is not structured. It's usually um, unstructured and it's scattered in 140 pages. So it's time consuming. Data Collection time consuming as well as data analysis. So, can you compare Walmart's historical data? Uh, can you compare Walmart against, let's say, uh, Costco or any other retail uh, retailers? Uh, it would be hard to do so. Um, on the corporate side, it's the same thing. For those who like to disclose this kind of data, it's important. There's a huge amount from these corporates that they like to disclose, they like to also monitor and track their own data set, but there aren't many great tools. At, at the moment, they only can ask the consulting. Firms, they have to pay a huge amount of money for them and then yeah, to do this kind of uh, green transformation, sustainable transformation. At the same time, for the banks, the banking, for the banks, they also monitor the clients' financial data on a monthly basis, but they don't have any tools to track the e their clients' ESG data set. And some banks, they are, they are required to monitor the, the clients' data, especially now the focus is currently on the, the greenhouse gases, the CO2 emission data. So that's one thing banks is working on, but then of course, how about any data that's outside CO2 data, outside uh, environment, that they don't have any tools to do. That's where we step in. So we're trying to connect these two, not only two, but these uh, stakeholders into one single platform. And that's trying to create this ESG data pipeline to connect one entity to the other. And uh, yeah, that's where we have our solutions. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you the demo later, but this is more like a Next, I'll call it some next gen Bloomberg that can be used anyone without any trainings. This is a vision is that everything will be integrated, uh, ESG data will be integrated in all transactions. We spend a lot of time on the, um, invest a lot of time on the user interface, user experience side, so that we try to, uh, try to ensure that anyone can use it uh, without any training. That's one product. So, this is to know the competitors, to know that how the industry is doing. At the same time, we have product, create a product to know yourself. So this is a solution for the companies to track and monitor, and also based on the data, uh, to try to come up with a new strategy action improvement. So this, by inputting the data of the corporates, give them back a report saying, hey, company A, you're on this side, on this part, you're doing really good compared to the industry average. However, on this side, you're pretty bad. Just give more example. CO2 emission, you're doing, again, you're doing good, but your female, uh, your diversity agenda is pretty bad. And after that, we can sort of recommend that, say, for these bad things, we, these are solutions we can improve, for this good thing, is something you can do better. We, we do have these two solutions, and then by having these solutions, we can, in a way, connect one to the other. So on one side, it, it, the trust for, we call it trust, uh, trust, for, trust for enterprise can be used to corporates to disclose the data. And then on the other hand, on the other side, we are trying to bridge the gap. On the other side, the AUC professional, they, they use interface called Trust to actually check and analyze how the company is doing. Yeah, and then we are working a lot of banks, mega banks, regional banks, and some other shrinking banks, because we only 20-ish start uh, FTEs at the moment in the company. We don't have capacity to reach out to every single corpus. So that's why we are working on the banks, especially banks as front of clients. So we are working on them so that they can reach out to the, we can reach out to these SMBs and get the data. And at the same time, the banks, they also need 
the client's ESG data. They need to, they want to monitor the ESG data of, the, of, the, of, of their clients. But that's a win-win situation. We can provide the tools for the banks that the banks can still distribute it to the end clients. And then we can get, we can share the data together. That's how we are working with the banks. And we have, yeah, just a bit of traction. We are working with many uh, companies, starting with the banks, financial institutions, investment banks, as well as uh, consulting firms and corporates, and we started in academia. So uh, we're getting pretty good traction at the moment. And yeah, we happen to be in the COP26 last year on one of the, so I think we, we presented in one of the events. And uh, yeah, we're working with, we're working with the regulator, government, yeah, so we try to work with many stakeholders so that we can create the world that we are we would like to make. And we happen to be in we had myself, I was in Silicon Valley last week and earlier this month my CEO Reggie D was also the Singapore Feet Festival. So I think in Japan we in Japan I think it's hard to say but uh, we think we have gone beyond the PMF stage already. So it's a matter we just need to invest on in, 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 you just need to create teams of sales team and then trying to invest money on the marketing. And by, by doing so, I think we should be able to get a good number of uh, Japanese segments, Japanese market. I think for that, I can see the future. But now, our next strategy is how can we replicate this in markets outside Japan? That's why uh, I was in uh, Senegal, Mali, and in Singapore in this month. And then hopefully, we can, you were thinking, go to Europe earlier next, next year. By achieving that, we do have a pretty diverse background a team. We are 20 ish people startup, but half of us are non Japanese. And then I think one third of us is working from outside Japan to the body. So people are coming from South Korea, Vietnam, India, China, one from uh, Belgium, uh, Brussels. Yeah. Yes, uh, that's it. Okay, there's a final presentation, a final slide. Yes, I think you know, for those who are here, my ask will be that if you know anyone, India, we need the binding of habits. So I think today's audience is our, my, my, our sweet spot. So if you're, anyone, if you're interested in joining us, more than happy to do so. If you know anyone that, that might fit in teams or products, and we can share the vision, mission, more than happy to talk. And if you can get connected with that person, that would be better. And uh, of course, if you know any clients, yes, more than, more than happy, yes, to discuss. That's about it.